When I serviced the Land Cruiser the other day, I stuffed up and it nearly cost me big time. Let's have a look at what I got wrong. So I did a service on the Cruiser the other day because we had a big trip, about 2000 Ks in front of us and it was due a service. So I gave it a service. I did a tire rotation and I was in a bit of a hurry, had the vehicle up on a mate's hoist, did my rotation and I used my rattle gun to nip the wheels up. And my rattle gun, like many of them, has adjustable torque settings. Whenever I use this one, I've found about setting two is a good place to start. And then once I've got the vehicle off the hoist, I run around with my torque wrench and I do the wheel nuts up to their torque setting of about 100 foot pounds. I think the actual spec for this vehicle is 97 foot pounds. I just go for the round 100, but I forgot to do that. And here's where I went wrong. That wheel stud broke. And you can see the fretting marks here where the wheel has been wobbling on the hub. So what happened, I was driving along on the way home and the last 100 k's of the journey, I heard a bang, which was probably that wheel stud coming out. And then I felt this bit of a vibration start to develop. And I didn't think a whole lot of it at the moment. But then when I got home and I was walking around the vehicle, I spotted this, this mark and up here and I spotted that there was a, a bolt loose and that's when I realized I forgot to torque the wheels up properly. So I'd certainly dodged a bullet. So what we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to take this wheel off, see if there's any other damage, but I've got a set of new wheel studs coming and we're gonna swap those wheel studs over. One of the big dangers when you're using a rattle gun and torquing up bolts like that is over torquing them. Because if you over torque them, then you can bust bolts as well. Now, like I say, I torque these on a low setting of two and I always get to tighten them up further with the torque wrench. So I know that that's good to go, but you do want to be careful or your rattle gun, I should say, set on say four and uh, yeah, give yourself some real grief by busting your wheel studs. Let me know in the comments down below if you've ever had a wheel come off your vehicle. I never have. This is as close as I've ever come. So here we go. So pull the brake caliper off. There's the brake caliper sitting there. Need a set of new brake pads, I think. So we'll do that. Brake drum comes off then. Now, obviously your vehicle may well be different, but um, you'll get the idea. Now, these are, this is a stud here that hasn't broken. And you can see that it comes through the back of this hub here. Now, you can take the whole hub off and put it in a press and press those out, that's nice. I'm gonna have a go at just pressing these out or belting them out with a hammer and see how we go. Um, there's the broken one there. So that's the bad culprit. So we've got to get that out. So we'll have a go at getting these out and we'll see how we go. So they all came out nice and easy. Sometimes they can be a, an absolute cow, but these were nice and easy. So you can see how the stud works. So see these serrations on here? They bind up into this metal here. Basically, that's what locks them in. So this doesn't turn when you're tightening and loosening your wheel nuts. There you go. So these are probably okay, but because one's failed, they've definitely been stressed. So they're all going in the bin. There's the broken one there. Obviously, I don't have the old broken wheel nut because that flew off down the road somewhere. So whenever I'm working on my vehicles, it's always good practice just to inspect everything else in the area whilst you're there. So handbrake shoes, these um, I serviced all this not so long ago, so they're all new. And it actually works moderately well, but Let's not kid ourselves, it's still a Land Cruiser. Handbrake system. All right, and down here, this um, this ring here is where the ABS works. That's the ABS sensor just there. And um, so that, basically that sensor is looking at the wheel as it rotates and goes round. And these, you know, segments here flash past that sensor and tell the computer if the wheel's turning or not. And that's, all part of the ABS braking system. 
Um, the other thing I'm checking and felt for is just to make sure that the wheel bearings are still good. Now these are hard to check with the axle in because this is, it's not really full floating, although we call it full floating. It's kind of semi full floating because the axle is bolted to the hub. If it was full floating, the, there would be a spline here at the end of the axle. But um, yeah, so to check wheel bearings, you probably you do have to actually pull the axle out and check it that way. But I run these bearings in oil. That's a whole nother conversation. I've done videos on that. I'll link that in the description down below so you can go and see why I do that. But it's the only way you should run these Toyota uh, rear ends. Um, any system like this on Toyota, run it, run these in, in oil simply leave that leave the axle seal out on the inside there overfill your differential a little bit through the diff breather run your wheel bearings a tad tighter and uh, you, you just won't have issues with your rear wheel bearings and as you can see there's no oil leaking out there which is what everybody reckons is going to be the problem i don't know how long they've been like that but it's a fair old while all right so uh, let's get these studs in so let me show you how I'm doing these studs. I've actually done two already just to prove that my little uh, system that I'm gonna show you worked here before I actually show you what I'm doing. So there's my new brake pads from Terrain Tamer. They arrived yesterday afternoon and the studs, they come like that. There we go, nice and new, good quality stuff. So, um, so th this new stud is going to go in here. Now, the only thing I like to do is as best you can, pull on the stud and feel where the serrations are. You want to try and get the serrations to go back into the serration from the original stud. See those grooves there and these grooves here. So you want to try and align those. It's kind of hard, but if you pull on the stud and rotate it, you'll feel it sort of engaging. And then once it engages, that's where you want to sit. So the next thing I'm doing, where have I done it? Here we go now. What, what would be nice is if you had an uh, M14 um, nut that suited this and you could just run a nut down. You don't want to, in normal circumstances, I've lost my part, here it is. You don't want to just chuck that on and tighten it up with that. Because of this taper, you'll damage the taper. I'm doing a sort of a different version of that, which is working quite nicely. Obviously, if you had a, um, a nice, decent size, like a pretty decent size G clamp, you could put a socket over there and clamp it into place. You'd need a pretty decent one with a bit of grunt um, and uh, you'd be able to press that in using that method there. So what I'm doing today though, is a little different. I've got myself this nut here, all right? We'll just slip that over the stud. And then I am using, because I cannot find the life of me, a uh, M14 stud. So what I'm doing is I'm using the, I am using the wheel stud or nut Okay, it's good doing stuff one hand while you hold a phone. Okay, and then this, what, what, what this is achieving is the same result. I'm not actually putting the taper of the wheel nut against, against this metal here. It's centralizing onto this nut, and then this nut is pressing on the hub, and it's put these two in quite well. Okay, so now that I've got that sort of there, now I wanna get this wheel stud aligned in the back here so this is just a feel thing there it is there i can feel so now i'm holding pressure in the right spot and i'll just nip that up okay so now because of all of this we're going to pull that stud in straight see that sitting on the back there so what i've done now i suggest you don't use your rattle gun at this point okay it'll be tempting um so i've just got a, a ratchet here uh, Let's see how that goes. Yeah, that's pulling in quite nicely. It's not its not a huge amount of force required. And that's what you want. If you were found that you were really reefing on this, I'd be pulling things out and seeing what's going on. Okay, so now that's getting too tight for the ratchet. So what I'll do now, I've got my breaker bar here. Now this breaker bar is way bigger than needed. It's not like this is stupidly tight, but it's just a bit too much for my little ratchet there. 
obviously you won't be filming while you're doing this because you guys are smarter than me. But hey, that's what I have to do. <laughs> of course, I could go and get Mrs. Mad Mad out here and do all of that, but that then turns into a massive production. So, there we go. I got told off then. You wouldn't have heard that, but I heard the big hoy because she heard me say that. <laughs> okay, so... That's it there. Okay, so now we'll just back that off. So it's really quite easy. And this is the sort of thing, honestly, if you had a stud brake on the road when you were traveling, you can literally do this on the side of the road. Okay, so you can see I haven't damaged the wheel stud. The nut, I should say. Getting all my words mixed up. And there you go, that's now in place. You can see that that's in place there. All right, so always carry a set of wheel studs with you when you're traveling, especially if you're loaded and in remote country, because they can break. Um, you don't know, especially on the older vehicles, these would be the original studs. So you don't know what history they've had and what fatigues could be there. So it's well worth doing. What I am gonna do is show you how you should put your wheels on and tighten up your wheel nuts. So I'll get all of this back together and then we'll show you that bit. So that's all back together now. Now, some, some people don't like this, but um, I believe it's the thing to do, especially for four driving, is I like to put a little bit of just grease or never seize in this case on my wheel studs. And uh, the reason for that is without that, you run the risk of the nut picking up, which is where the, the metal binds up in the nut on the stud and you can't get your wheel nut off because they get rusty, they get moisture in there. Bit of grease on there, I've never had them come off because of the grease. I had them come off because buckle lugs didn't tighten up the, the correct parts. But anyway, I like to do that. So now I'm gonna chuck the wheel on and then I'm gonna show you how to tighten up these wheel nuts properly. So the wheel's on. I put all the wheel nuts on by finger, finger tight, so they're just loose, you know, but they're on two or three threads. I prefer to do that than put the nut in the rattle gun and then hook in and damage the, you know, cross thread things or whatever. This is just a safe way to do it. Now my rattle gun is on two, so your rattle gun may be different. A light setting, all we're trying to do is just use the rattle gun to, to bring the nuts up against the face, nice and easy. That's all we want to do. Not really trying to tighten anything. So now we grab the torque wrench and we set it to the settings for our wheel stud. Obviously every wheel stud is going to be different. So Google it or find, look in the workshop manual for your vehicle. And then we just tighten that up. As you can see, I've gone probably about half a turn. Yeah, not quite half a turn. I'm going to say third turn before we hit torque. And then we'll go to the opposite wheel stud. So that's why the um, rattle gun is not over tightening in this. There she goes. So we'll just follow this sort of pattern. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, just use a breaker bar or the wheel brace that comes with the vehicle and you're not going to do them as tight as you can that's uh that's definitely going to be too tight you just want to well it's sort of an experience thing if you haven't got a torque wrench you know it's just kind of a feel you'll have and i can't really describe it to you in the video all i can say is just don't over tighten them and if you're not confident, check them after you've driven for a bit. So they're all now torqued up to spec. And the beauty of this is the standard factory wheel brace will get them undone if I have a flat on the side of the road, which is a really important thing. Well, there you go, guys. Look, I hope, I hope you learned something from that. They're all done up to torque now. And the beauty of that is that they're not too tight. So they're not going to come loose. They're not going to 
break off. And if you get a flat out there on the road, they're going to be able to be undone. If you do them up too tight or do them up with a rattle gun, you, sometimes on the road, you just will not get them undone. And that's the last thing you need when you've got a flat tire and need to change the sucker. All right, guys, let us know in the comments down below what you reckon. Um, yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts. Have you ever had a wheel come off your car? Can't be good. All right, guys, I'm Matt Matt. Stay safe on the trails.